Okay, everybody, we're live. Apologies for the disconnection. Um, my phone just totally overheated. Um, and uh, we lost the whole live stream, unfortunately. So um, it's a scorcher today. It's really hot. The plants have been suffering. Um, and apparently my phone's been suffering quite a bit too and, and did not want to cooperate. Uh, so apologies for that. Um, we're going to see if we can get an umbrella next time so that we can keep uh, the... Uh, a recording of the lime street the live stream in a shaded area uh, because uh, we don't want any more uh, phones crashing and, and ending the live stream due to overheating so <laughs> oh my gosh I'm so sorry no that's okay um, you didn't get me okay. but here's what we did uh, so if, for those of you who missed it uh, so this bed what we did right here is we sowed a cocktail of warm season cover crop seeds um, we Treated the bed with a mixture of worm tea and crop inoculant. Um, then we, we treated and sowed the seeds with worm tea, inoculant, and inoculant. Um, and uh, then we covered up with soil and treated that as well. And then we covered with straw mulch. Uh, so um, the straw mulch is it's going to help retain moisture as the seeds germinate. Uh, because it's really important for these seeds to have consistent moisture as they germinate. Otherwise their germination will fail. Um, and pretty soon uh, this bed will be full of foliage and uh, um, we'll have a nice cover crop coming up that'll get uh, very large and will attract lots of pollinators uh, and beneficial insects, will stimulate microbes in the soil, and will improve the quality, structure, and fertility of the soil in general. Uh, so, um, and it's going to be beautiful. This mix is full of flowers. Um, we even threw some edible seeds in there. Um, just so that we could go in and uh, pick some uh, edible plants uh, while the cover crop is growing. Uh, so it's going to be fantastic and a nice addition to our garden uh, for this year. So um, that's how we start our cover crops. Uh, now we're going to talk about how we're going to terminate or kill our cover crops uh, because we have a mix of cover crops that has outlived its lifespan for us. Uh, we need to get our seedlings into this bed, uh, so therefore we need to terminate it. So the idea is... Um, over here, I'm going to see if I can keep this in the shade. Um, this bed right here is the one we're going to terminate today. And um, so here's the game plan, Brianna. Um, so we're going to cut the, ex the, the parts off um, with the shears that are like uh, sticking out quite a bit and, and get the height over the whole bed to be roughly like this. Um, and then we're going to crimp them down with the action hoe that I brought. Uh, so does that, I'll show you how to do that, but the first thing we gotta do is we just gotta get the shears and, and like trim all this extra stuff off. Um, it's a shame we gotta terminate these now, because as I said before the video crashed, um, we could let these go a little bit longer if we wanted to. We're gonna let the other ones that we have go a bit longer, um, but uh, we need to get rid of these now because we have seedlings that are ready to go in and we don't want the seedlings to start declining in health as we wait for the cover crop to finish uh, so we're gonna get this going um, okay. yeah why don't you uh, bring the the red uh, tub over here we're gonna use that to store our um, um, trimmings from it and then we're gonna we're gonna chop we're gonna lay everything on top that we took off um, to create a nice uh, mulch layer on top and then we're gonna cover it up with some wood chips good. so I'll go get the shears uh, you guys can uh, Go ahead and admire the beauty of the cover crop really quick as I go get the shears. Huh? Sorry about the live ending. That was really unfortunate. Whoa. Yeah, we gotta make sure that's in the shade. We'll go through and talk about what's in here really quick. I'm hoping that my phone does not overheat again. Also, um, now that we're uh, in good shape, there was a question about hydroponics, wasn't there, Brianna? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, we'll all talk about that. So uh, this is what we're going to be terminating. Oh man, it's hot. It's humid today, too. We've got some hairy vets in there. Okay. Austrian field peas. Um, just look at, all the, look at all the life in here. This is why you plant the cover crops. It brings life to your garden in many ways. Uh, so we got some brassicas. The grass you see in there is winter wheat. Look at that little guy. What do they call these guys again? I don't remember what they are, but they're like a, it's like a type of moss. 
they're pollinators. Uh, so, um, yeah, in a minute, let's get that back. Let's get this back over here in the shade. I want to keep this as shaded as possible. Hoping it does not overheat again. All right. Yes, what, what is the question? So this was a question that was on a comment. Um, do you need a lot of space to get started? Can you have a small hydroponic setup if you live in an apartment or place with limited space? Absolutely. You can have a hydroponic system that can that you can carry in your two hands. Um, uh, there really is no limit to how small you can make a system. I have grown uh, plants hydroponically out of mason jars. Uh, it's called the Kratky method, K-R-A-T-K-Y. It's very easy, um, and you can design many types of hydroponic systems to fit any space, like a balcony, um, like your kitchen counter. Um, uh, I would recommend if you have a balcony, try looking into a nutrient film technique, NFT or Dutch bucket system. Um, if you're growing indoors and you just have like a little uh, area for it, try a deep water culture system. Um, check out our video on how to select a hydroponic system on the Maryland Magrum Center YouTube. Uh, that will give you details about how these systems function. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that out and uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, we got to get to this now before the live stream ends. <laughs> so um, I have to stop these off. Dropping and crimping and dropping. So which part should I be crimping? Um, you think that you can help uh, Popping? Drop yeah. somehow? I've never done crimping before. Literally, I've not either, but I understand the principle, so how to do it. Yeah, that would be great. Is this the height it's supposed to be or shorter? That's fine. Yeah, try not to take the roots out. You can help it. Are we ready to harvest? Oh, we like can. Yellow. Oh, they are ready. But we can check for nodulation. That's a good thing to do. Um, here. All right, these, these plants are in, in the ground pretty tough. So the idea behind crimping is we're going to lay them flat and snap the stems like that uh, with a special tool that I brought. This thing, it's called an action hoe. Um, you normally use it like this to kind of like weed, but we're going to try and use it to crimp. And I think it'll, I think that works. If you go like that, slam it down, be sure to avoid the drip lines, that should crimp it pretty well. Okay, um, so I'll do that. Yeah, we might actually want to cut it a bit shorter. Um, really quick, wanted yeah. to show some right. radishes. <laughs> I need to get some water, I'm so thirsty. These are baby radishes. Today. Yeah, it's super hot, maybe, I don't know, maybe we could, <laughs> I know I have my class before this, like change the live time, I feel like, or to later or earlier, because it's gonna be hot. Yeah, I would like to change the live time to earlier, to be honest. I mean, I could do like 8.30. I don't know about 8.30. <laughs> Let's see, it's already like 10 o'clock. Yeah, Done. You're taking summer school? No, I'm not. 
finally I'll have a summer to myself where I don't have to do school. Well, as good as it's gonna get. So we just wanna crimp this down and try not to pull the roots up, but those roots do look healthy. One thing that we can do is we can check for what are called rhizosheaths on the roots. Down, we definitely basically. have lots of biology on these roots, that's for sure. Yeah, but you have to go harder. You have to make sure that you really like snap the stems. I would hold it like that. So they don't come back up? Yeah, so they don't come back up. Just like that. You want to make sure that it's like snapped or severed. Uh, you see like right there, that one is not, because that'll come, so that'll come back. Now it's like, now it's tripped out and you want to flatten Should it. Should I try doing that with this? Good luck. <laughs> you really need this for that. And we want to make sure to avoid the drip lines. Um, yeah, originally I thought we were going to like pull it out. Oh, no way. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Maybe explain why. Because you want the, the roots to stay in the soil and you want them to decompose while they're in the soil. Um, let's see, I wanna, I wanna see if we have some good rhizosheaths for me. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get some. Yeah, um. You see how the roots stick to the soil like that? That's what you want. Or the soil sticks to the roots. It's called the rhizosheath. That's built with biology. That's built by the, the life in the soil. And that's where everything that makes plants healthy happens. Everything. Yeah, so we need to make sure everything is in the bed. And we're going to leave this, actually, for a little bit to make sure that it all dies. So we're not planting nothing. Not yet. The tomatoes are going somewhere else. saving you work in the long run and saving you money. It's a lot cheaper to get seeds than it is to, to maintain your beds to, and it costs a lot less time to do cover crops in terms of labor than fertilizers. We're already going to be able to reduce our fertilizer use in this bed thanks to these guys. It'll be reduced very substantially. This soil before this is degraded. Look at it now. It's incredible. It's well structured. It's got an amazing texture. It's perfect soil. This this is like what cover crops do to your soil. They make they turn it into like the best soil ever. Look at all those little. Look at that little. Uh, what's it called? Little look, we're even getting we're things. getting aggregation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's
And they use, they normally use a special uh, machine to do this called a roller crimper. That's like really strong and really heavy. It's attached to a tractor. Um, that's how I do that on big farms. Yeah, look at this soil. It's so much better. Amazing benefits of cover crops. Changes everything. I'm gonna get some water. You gotta go harder than that. You gotta really, you really gotta, gotta crimp it. Yeah, and we're gonna come back and check. I'm gonna check tomorrow to see how they're, they're going and. Uh, I should have brought water, because I did not bring water. That was, that's bad. We're gonna make sure everything is dying off before we plant. And just to be extra sure, we're gonna mulch over. What's gonna happen? They can come back and they can stay alive and then, then they're weeds. Sure. I'll do most of the exertion since you don't have one. <laughs> yeah, I, I left my water bottle. I think it's bridal. So. Oh God. <laughs> we can walk on this too. What if I step on it? Is that bad? You could step on it. It helps, it helps terminate it. One thing we gotta do is wanna, we wanna try and get them all, like, one thing that other people can actually help with, um, one thing we could do is we can kind of comb them all in one direction. We comb them in that direction. You know, this just needs to be the thumbnail. <laughs> Let's comb it in one direction. Okay. So that'll help us terminate it. But okay. We can keep, we could, you could literally terminate these by repeatedly trampling on them. So, uh, we just I wanna... think this is my favorite part. Definitely. And look at all this, it's free mulch now. That's what cover crops become when you terminate them. Mulch. And as we do this, the soil underneath is not compacting because we're stepping on the plants, not the soil. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, let's keep going. We're almost there. How do you know when it's complete? Um, I want to do another once over. And we sewed this bed so densely, so it's actually harder to terminate. Yeah. And these should terminate pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. These ones are next to the drip line, so I want to be careful. Yeah, they're, they're, these, you see that? How they're getting snapped like that? Yeah. That's exactly what we want. That's crimping. Much different than just cutting it at the base. Yeah, I mean this this is better honestly. Yeah, yeah it allows the plants uh because the plants are still alive when you crimp, but what happens is they just kind of die off slowly. And it doesn't send I think it doesn't send like a signal to the roots to start sending up more shoots with certain plants, because certain plants will do that. But we're getting close. It's two o'clock. All right. So maybe we'll finish, we'll finish up later. But so that's the basic idea. There, it's hard because this is a raised bed, and we have our uh, we have our um, uh, drip tubing to worry about. Um, but yeah, we have crimped these now and trampled them a bit, and uh, that'll terminate them. Uh, then we can mulch over. Uh, once we verify that they're terminated and plant, uh, get some uh, warm season plants in. We'll be doing that next week. That's the goal. Um, along with our hydroponic seed starting. Uh, the uh, flyer that was posted this week was not correct. We were doing this today, not hydroponic seed starting. Uh, so that'll be next week. Um, as always, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, drop them in the chat during our live streams or um, 
use the Ask a Master Gardener feature on our website. Yes. Uh, and we will get back to you with questions. <laughs> um, anyways, this concludes the live stream. Thank you for tuning in this week. Uh, sorry we lost some of the footage from earlier when we sewed. Uh, when, we, when we sewed. <laughs> um, but my phone did overheat. So we're going to figure out how to address that better in the future so we don't have that happen again. Because uh, we want uh, these live streams to be recorded and up for you all to see if you need to refer back to them. Um, so anyways, thank you for tuning in this week. See you guys next week. Have a good one.